Uh, thank you for the invitation. And what I do, I'm a senior lecturer and a course coordinator in the Adelaide Medical School in the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences. And in addition to that, I am uh, an Adelaide Education Specialist and part of the Adelaide Education Academy. Okay, that is a great question. And um, as someone who used to be a crammer, <laughs> I think it's, um, I, I, I can speak about this. So in terms of, let's just take it a step back and talk about how it is that we learn, the process of learning. So we hear or see something new and it enters our short-term memory and that becomes a superficial level of learning. Now from here on, we're going to think about it, perhaps revise our notes, uh, we're going to sleep on it. The best thing we can actually do is try to link it to prior knowledge, so something that we already know, and try to link the new concepts together as well because that helps with the learning. And what this does is actually physically move um, that content from short-term memory into long-term memory. And this is now deep learning. And this is where we want to be at. So this is where we're able to um, really understand and comprehend that knowledge and then later on apply it in life. So, because really we are lifelong learners. So back to the question of uh, cramming or spaced out learning. What happens when we cram um, is we just reach that level of superficial learning. So that means that um, some of us, we may be able to recall that information for the test of the exam that, that we've crammed for and that, and that is happening, but um, we will definitely not be able to retain that knowledge. We won't be able to comprehend really what that was about and we'll definitely struggle to apply it later on. Whereas with spaced out learning, what we're doing is going through all of those processes of learning and storing it in our long-term memory. Um, again, getting that comprehension and that application in as well. And it's setting us up for, um, for retaining that knowledge long-term. So for example, research has shown that if you have 12 hours to study for a topic, um, it's much more efficient to spend three hours every week across a four week period rather than 12 hours in one week or 12 hours in one day before the exam. Mm -hmm.